Hello, friends, and welcome back to Malicious Compliance Stories. Our first story is one roller coaster of Karen behavior. She's the mega boss Karen after you've defeated all of the regular Karens. But before we begin, best way to support our channel is to leave comments, like, and subscribe with the turned on bell so you don't miss the new video every single day. Here we go. Crazy lady wants an Apple Watch, but doesn't want to pay for it. So I work as a salesperson in an electronics store. We've had this lady in recently that doesn't seem to understand that stores exist to trade the customer's money in exchange for goods and services. She's been in several times now and each time is weirder than the last. First encounter. Crazy lady comes into the store and starts yelling at me to help her and that she's in a hurry. Never mind the fact that I'm in the middle of helping someone else. I tell her I'll be done in a minute, all the while she's hanging over us and trying to jump in and take over. A couple of times she even shouted, I'm thirsty, give me water. So when it's finally her turn, she starts yelling at me more. Crazy lady, I need an Apple Watch, give me an Apple Watch. Me, I'm sorry, but we don't have the model you want in right now, but I can order one for you. All right, what's your phone number? Of course, she isn't registered, so I have to fill in her information manually. Crazy lady, punch in the information quickly. I'm in a hurry. I have an appointment at the hospital. I'm thirsty. Give me water now. Me, I'm sorry, we're in the middle of an electronics store? I don't have any water to hand out here, but you can buy a bottle by the cashier. Crazy lady, come on, go fast, flicking her hand in my face. All she's doing at this point is distracting and distressing me so that I have to double check the information and spend way longer than needed. I skip some of the things we're supposed to recommend like payment plans, service plans, and accessories since she said she's in a hurry and send her a longer way. All right, everything's ready. You can go over to the cashier to finalize the order. A few minutes later, the cashier comes down to my department while I'm helping some new customers clearly confused and says, um, she says she doesn't have money right now and wants to pay later. So I tell him, oh, she told me she was in a hurry. I can set up a payment solution for her, but it's going to take a little while. She can't have it both fast and all sorted. It's one or the other. So she comes back with a half empty soda bottle that she hasn't paid for. This time she hardly says a word, just waits for me to fill everything in and apply for credit. To my surprise, it comes through and everything's in order. I even added the soda to the final sum in order to cover it and she leaves. Second encounter. This time she's bustling into the store to pick the watch up, but she's dragging someone in with her. Turns out it's a taxi driver. Crazy lady. I don't have any money. You guys have to sort it out. Pay the taxi, she says. Meanwhile, going over to the cashier and grabbing another soda and gulping down half of it before anyone can stop her. Again, we try to explain to her that it doesn't work like that. I have to set up specific orders for specific items that are part of our stock, and there's a minimum spending limit. You can't get cash to pay other people. You cannot just take things from the store and just have it added to some sort of tab either. Taking those drinks is outright theft. She refuses to listen and keeps repeating that she doesn't have time nor money and has to sort it out the next time she's in. Seeing how ridiculous the situation is, we give up, shove the watch into her arms, and tell taxi driver to call the cops if she's not going to pay for the ride. She left with the taxi driver, so we don't know how this went down. One of my colleagues revealed to me that she's been in another time in the meantime as well, her face caked up in some dried up facial treatment goo. So my colleagues call her the mask lady while I call her the soda lady, asking for the watch and ended up having them call an ambulance because she kept going on about being too tired to go home and telling them to call someone to help her. Turns out she just wanted a free ride home. Third encounter. Apparently nothing of great consequence happened to her as she learned absolutely nothing. So this time she came back with the watch and demanded that we set it up and connect it to her phone and get all the apps working the way she wants it to work. The guys in our technical support haven't encountered her yet, so they start just working without any suspicions and she goes and grabs another soda. When the job's done, she has to pay. She finally blurts out, I have no money. I have to fix it some other time. 
Luckily, our operations manager was at the desk as well and was having none of it and promptly took the watch as insurance until she can pay for the service and all the sodas she's been stealing. I'm surprised they got her to leave without the watch. So now we're just waiting to see what her next escapade will bring. I'm also completely expecting her to bring us the invoice for the watch and tell us to pay for the watch as well at some point. I mean, what dimension did this customer warp in from? It's like she missed the memo on how stores operate. First off, demanding water in an electronic store? Classic Karen move. Then she pulls this, I'm in a hurry, but I'm also broke stunt, not once, but twice, and don't even get me started on the taxi escapade, claiming the store should pay for her ride? The audacity. Share your thoughts down below, hit that like button, subscribe for more wild retail tales, and brace yourself for the next episode of Customers Gone Wild. Stay sane out there, folks. And our second story. Lady, just because we speak the same language as the owner doesn't mean I work here. Background. My husband and I got married about six years ago and we went on our honeymoon to Southern California. We're Italian. And also a few years before that, my husband's childhood friend moved with his family to the San Francisco area for his father's job. So on our honeymoon, we went up to the San Francisco area. I don't remember the exact town, just know it was near San Francisco where his friend's mother owned and operated an authentic Italian restaurant. I've been to the U.S. many times, and no offense, but most of what you call Italian restaurants definitely aren't. His friend had been able to come over for our wedding, but his friend's parents had not, so this was my first time meeting them. After we had ordered, my husband had told the server that she needed to tell the owner that Giacomo and his wife was there. The owner came out, we greeted each other, and we all began to have a conversation in Italian. Then she left and my husband got up to use the restroom. On his way there, he passed a table where a lady loudly said, Can we get some service here? My husband simply said, I'll go find a server for you, but I'm in a bit of a hurry here. The lady then said, I know you work here. I just saw you and your friend talking to the owner in Spanish or whatever gibberish you were speaking. Take our order. My husband, not wishing to incite anything, just ignored them and went on his way, telling a server on his way that the ladies' table needed help. I assume they got the help they were looking for. Later in the evening, the owner did her rounds of the restaurant, checking if everybody had a good meal. The lady said, The food was fine, but the service here sucks. The owner asked who their server was, and the lady then pointed to my husband, who was finishing his meal, and said, Him! Do you actually let employees bring their friends and eat with them when they should be helping customers? The owner said, he doesn't work here. He's a friend of my son's here with his bride from the home country. The lady then scoffed and shrugged her away. Afterwards, we could hear the lady's friends giving her a hard time telling her, just because they speak the same language doesn't mean he works here, among other things. The lady was turning red at all this, and when it was time to leave, marched over to our table and told my husband, you're not fooling anyone. You work here, and your poor service reflects poorly on this place. And then she pointed at me and said, I don't know who you're trying to fool here, but those are obviously fake. My husband had to explain to me later that she was talking about my chest. All the women in my family are well-blessed in that area, where some of us see it as a curse, like me, and others see it as a blessing, like my husband. I wasn't even wearing anything revealing. She felt like she had to get the last word in. Her friends, I assume, then told her that what she said was inappropriate, and they should just leave before she made things worse, and so they left. Ah, I see you met the Wild American Karen. Plenty of those in the Bay Area. The Wild Karen is an elusive beast. She's fully capable of camouflaging herself in many different disguises, and will attack from stealth or openly stalk her prey. Her hunting methods vary from her terrain. She'll take down her prey and scream like a banshee if she's confronted. And our next story. Annoying Karen at Ross. As a security guard, I often have to deal with customers from stores. Normally, it's to get them to leave if they're doing something the store doesn't like. But on this one day, I got to tell off an impatient Karen at Ross. 
So for some backstory, I was stationed as security for a shopping center, and as part of my rounds when I would first clock in, I would check in with the Ross as I was always called in to help them with stopping someone from stealing. On this particular day, the store was packed. I was talking to the loss prevention person stationed at the door, checking in to see what manager was in charge for the night and seeing how the store had been so far. Out of the corner of my eye, I see two ladies standing at the jewelry counter waiting to be helped and glaring at it. Loss prevention informs me that he already called someone to help them, but they just hadn't got there yet as it was slammed and all hands were needed to ring customers as the line was almost out the door it was so long. As we're finishing up our talk, which was only maybe three minutes at most, I turn to walk out the door to finish my rounds when Karen suddenly yells towards me, excuse me, I need some help here, in a very rude tone. Not missing a beat, I turn around and look at her. Ma'am, he already called someone for you, points to LP. As you can see, they're swamped and the line is long. Maybe you should grow some patience and learn to wait your turn. I then walked out of the store with the biggest smile on my face, my inner customer service rep clapping at finally being able to tell a Karen off. Love this. Props. Good job. And our last story. The HOA tried to ban my father from building a greenhouse. I grew up in an old, affluent, and historical neighborhood in Houston, Texas. The South loves their HOAs. There were rules about how your house couldn't be painted certain colors, you couldn't put certain signs or objects in your yard, including any type of for sale advertising. All renovations and construction had to first be approved and signed off on by the HOA, and so many more ridiculous rules. The one that ultimately got my dad involved in what came to be an all-out war with them was over the approval of construction rule and a rule that stated that all your construction projects had to stop five feet before your property line. My dad decided to build himself a greenhouse. We lived in a beautiful postmodern style home that was originally built in 1950 and was designed by a well-known architect to the Houston area. My dad learned that the original architect's son was now also an architect, so he hired him to design a deck and greenhouse that matched the original house. He did an amazing job. No one could tell that they'd not been originally part of the house. However, the HOA got quite upset that my dad never ran his projects by them first, and they also sent him multiple notifications that he needed to tear down part of his greenhouse so that it matched up with the property line rule. Y'all, the greenhouse went about a foot and a half over the specified amount, five feet. These HOA board members, however, knew how to throw their weight around and knew how to use every written rule to their advantage. My dad found and spoke with many unhappy residents who were targeted by the HOA and a few who also attempted to fight back, but most usually wound up having to give in to their demands. This HOA had multiple lawyers on the board plus their very own legal team and had no problem going to court and then using stalling tactics to make the opposing party back down due to cost. Long story short, they wound up in court and my dad was able to win. This battle lasted years. I couldn't believe how there are people that cared that much about how other people live in their own space. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.